Good afternoon, Rahul. Yes, sir. Rahul. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. How are you? I'm good, sir. Thank you. So, from where do you belong? Belong to which sir, place? Sir, I belong from. Sir, I belong from Begu Sarai district of Bihar. Begu Sarai. So, what is so important about this uh, uh, your native place and its significance? Begu Sarai is known as the industrial and financial capital of Bihar. Basically, sir, all the industrial hub, it was once the, the industrial hub of Bihar. Sir, it has uh, industries like, sir, uh, the Indian Oil Corporation refinery, sir, uh, the fertilizer corporation plant, and sir, Baroni dairy plant. Apart from this, it is also has some, uh, pro produce some uh, prominent personalities in the uh, uh, history. So, for example, sir, uh, our uh, uh, Ram Dhari Singh Dinkar, the historian Ram Sharan Sharma, and sir, these things are significant. So, but both these fertilizer plants are closed now. Baroni and yes, uh, Sir, it was revived two years back. Why? Why were these plants closed? So, uh, first, so there was the uh, resistance by locals because uh, due to the them, so there was a huge groundwater pollution that was being created. And secondly, sir, uh, there was also the company was going in loss. So these two reasons, uh, due to these two reasons, it was shut down, sir, in 1997. So, but why, why the company was going in loss? Why this uh, uh, Brony plant that was a fertilizer corporation of India, FCI. So why was that plant uh, closed? Sir, uh, the loss it was making, sir, it was due to the first the management efficiency inefficiencies that was being uh, done, and sir, secondly, the raw materials which it used to source sir, that was also like a uh, hiked the price was hiked that time, and like uh, government had fixed the uh, the, uh, the prices of uh, sir, the distribution like uh, whatever the selling prices there. So due to these two factors, uh, sir, losses were being accumulated. I think the problem was because of uh, they were using uh, fuel oil, perhaps, sir. and uh, at that time the pricing uh, was switched over to gas-based plants. So this uh, brawny plant, it become uh, it became uh, inefficient. That is why it was to be closed. It had to be closed by FCI. Okay, so. Read more about uh, this, uh, the circumstances under which this uh, brawny uh, fertilizer plant was uh, closed. And what are your interests, your hobbies? Yes. Sir, my hobbies are like playing cricket and sir, listening to old Bollywood songs of the 1990s. Bollywood songs? Okay. I think just for the sake of hobby, you have written this or you have a real interest in this? Bollywood songs? Sir, I have very, very genuine interest in this, sir. And I'd never miss uh, to I hear them, sir, any day. Okay. Okay, I'll ask a very, very general question. Is the world becoming a better place to live? Give me pros yes, and cons. Is the world becoming a better place to live? Yes. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, yes, okay. because sir, hmm, tell me why. Sir, uh, every day, like sir, we are pro progressing, uh, we are advancing, sir, scientifically. Sir, world, uh, like uh, we can, uh, like uh, sir, there is uh, like advance of technology. Sir, uh, ease of life is being, sir, uh, more and more there. More and more facilities are being, sir, like uh, provided, sir, more into the like rural areas first, which were like concentrated in few urban centers. So these facilities are now being provided in the rural areas and all. There's a global connectivity, sir. We can connect with our any of our relatives within a second. So this was not like uh, uh, the decades back, two decades, two or three decades back. Sir, every information is sir, within our tips. And sir, like uh, these things are making a world better place to do. So you are oh, seeing sir, the brighter aspect, huh? brighter aspect of the world. Huh? What about climate change? What about spiritual crisis? What about conflicts arising everywhere? What about Russia, Ukraine? All over the world, conflicts are increasing. 
and the mental sicknesses they are taking an epidemic form so how can you say the world is becoming a better place today? what a, kind of world a, we will be living for next generation sir like regarding conflicts sir these were like uh, more evident sir since the historical times sir ancient times their times of that uh, sir at that times also there were conflicts and all and sir like uh, the climate change sir uh, at, uh, although sir that's a very negative thing sir but still we are now better prepared to like uh, deal with any any of the disaster we have sir early warning systems evacuation systems and all sir so these are uh, ob obviously sir we need to perform better on the climate change aspects and like go on sustainable goals sir but still like we are at currently sir better prepared uh, to deal with that oh okay so you think uh, we will handle uh, climate change in time to come sir if all the countries become uh, like uh, come on the same board and like uh, join hands pledge together although sir there are still uh, like uh, nuances currently but still i i still believe that uh, all the countries will come together and we will really, as a humanity uh, handle climate change what is toxic positivity have you heard this term toxic positivity sir i am not exactly aware of it <laughs> <laughs> when when we when we think uh, too much of positivity is toxic is a new term, terminology coming up that we are becoming every time we ask people to become more positive so but i think it is not possible it is better to be realistic so that is called uh, this is the new term coming up toxic uh, vishnu have you heard this man i have i have not <laughs> okay okay so uh, we wait after you uh, we wait please take over yes sir sure okay so my question to you rahul is that um, how do you see the disparity among states today compared to what it was let's say 20 years ago in terms of economic development and prosperity sir in my opinion sir the gap has somewhat sir, like uh, narrowed down uh, in terms of economic development for example sir if we take like if you take sir uh, my state sir bihar and compare with it any other states uh, like uh, in the past 10 or 20 years sir uh, bihar has made a rapid stride sir we had a uh, almost a double digit growth and sir that is sir uh, like somewhat narrow narrowing down the disparity also sir in terms of educational uh, and health infrastructure sir uh, bihar uh, some new iits triple it sir that have been opened up and sir that are like uh, closing down the gap which states have impressed you most in terms of uh, working on the good governance aspects as well as maybe even if they don't measure it the happiness index of the state sir regarding happiness index sir uh, madhya pradesh government that has opened a separate department for some uh, happiness and sir like for good governance aspect sir uh, in sir for example in my state sir bihar sir there is a right to public service rtps right to public services act sir where everything sir like uh, for like caste certificate or sir any income certificate anything we been required sir we all have been like given uh, online up, uh, like system everything we can file do online so that has e uh, uh, like has uh, like reduced the bureaucratic uh, hassles for people yeah hopefully we'll all become happy if more and more happiness departments open there is no correlation between the two but let's see what uh, efforts can be made uh rahul uh, there is a candidate or a sports girl who has joined the indian soccer team from jharkhand what is her name she has been in the news in the last two or three days sir exactly not aware of her what do you feel can be done to increase india's medal tally at the olympic level you know that there are excellent athletes from throughout the country who are perhaps not from the big cities but from the small towns what can be done to make a sports culture in india that eventually leads to international success yes, sir. sir first of all sir we need to like ramp up the grounds level infrastructure especially in the schools and sir the districts where sir like the small towns sir, there we need to like ramp up uh, the infrastructure the, the 
the facilities provided secondly sir uh, we can also employ sir some of the sir, scientific training methods sir uh, like how uh, like data analysis and also these things like uh, sir these things need to be invested more and sir we need to like uh, improve on sir the uh, the, uh, the facilities which are provided to uh, sports candidates so that they take up these as a career not as a hobby sir currently like uh, many many a times uh, like in small towns actually sir they take uh, this as a hobby not as a career so therefore there is a like divided focus so so we need to like uh, improve its facilities and like its works so that sir they come up they come forward and sir uh, we like might improve on them um, medal tally what about social awareness you know this is also a part of social awareness which should be there in society that girls boys everybody should play uh outdoors and you know it should be a culture of sports in the country will leads to a healthier uh, country as a nation so what should be done and not only this particular aspect of, of social awareness what should the government do to create social awareness on all such issues so that the society is better equipped to go forward into the new era sir for like uh, social awareness sir, uh, we need to like convey them the message and sir the best person to convey a message will be sir a local leader like for example uh, uh, for health sir we have asha workers and like sir similarly like uh, a ground level infra like leader who is from them if sir he would or she would convey the message so it would get better uh, like conveyed and sir we like we can focus on these type of awareness drives so uh, that will like uh, help us create better that's a good answer but who will convey it to the asha workers that is the question so that is the that is the responsibility of like government and district administration or uh, which conveys to the block and sir that uh, block administration and that conveys to the further okay the last question that i have uh, what are the four uh, grand slam tournaments of tennis sir uh, one is sir a us open uh, wimbledon uh, french open and sir australian open Uh, any idea who is the reigning men's women Wimbledon champion? Men's Wimbledon champion? So I am not exactly. Aware. Okay, that was unnecessary question anyway. That's. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ruthi ji. Okay, hello Rahul. So uh, let's uh, look into a few aspects of your personal details, right? So uh, first thing I could find is very interesting. This is that Bollywood songs of nineties. You are very much interested. So one question from my side: What was the USP of Bollywood songs in nineties, and how you are finding that thing lacking today? Or if it's not lacking, that's again a good thing for us. one thing what uh, 1990s prominently had ma'am that was like uh, the best fusion of like ma'am the vocals and the technology ma'am like before 1990s in my opinion there was ma'am more focus on vocals and less on like uh, technology like the mixing part and all we had live recordings and ma'am that uh, sound quality was not coming better and sir ma'am like in current days ma'am like uh, technology is, i think ma'am uh, has a greater priority ma'am like it can be like a 50.5 and 49.5 over vocals so ma'am that has a best fusion on 1990s and the melodies uh, had a uh, like leading part and that's why ma'am i had a, a great uh, affection towards 1990 okay. songs okay so next hobby is playing cricket so can you uh, just tell me that what are few points of differences if i say between men's test cricket and women test cricket uh first is the difference between ma'am the rules like the regulations like for example ma'am the boundaries uh, for women so that is kept shorter secondly ma'am the weight of ball ma'am like uh, for men it is uh, for women it is ma'am around uh, 10 grams uh, like uh, lighter than the men's what about the duration of the test match sorry to interrupt uh, for women and men that i'm not exactly uh, like remembering correctly yet. i think sir it should be like both for uh, for five days for both four day for women i think so you have to go into these things as well uh, okay rahul what is the full form of bcci the board of cricket control uh, in india and whose jurisdiction it's come under it is an autonomous uh, or a body like ma'am which regulates it doesn't come under any jurisdiction in my opinion and uh, ma'am it is an independent or a body no it do comes under the jurisdiction please go and check 
okay uh, another thing i could find in your daf is that you have participated in youth parliament right so uh, how do you think that youth parliament is going to be beneficial for democracy of india youth parliament gives uh, opportunity to man the various uh, youth people to uh, like uh, basically uh, debate or uh, listen uh, the to the views of other other people like other what others have to say address man that's a very healthy debate and we may like, get to listen to the others views and being like, patiently i mean this is like this cultivates a culture of like ma'am hearing and uh, like giving opportunity freedom of expression and all man, these things are very essential for any democracy to thrive and then these things will help uh, indian democracy rather spread okay can you just tell few issues which you have taken up in youth parliament yes sir Um, at a district level, ma'am, uh, issues I have taken are like ma'am zero budget natural farming, and ma'am at climate at a uh, state level, ma'am that topic was ma'am like uh, climate change uh, is a like a great needs to have a greater priority than COVID nineteen. Okay, okay, uh, Rahul, again from your personal detail only, you come from Begusarai, right? So uh, how Begusarai got its name? Man, Begu Sarai uh, got its name from like man, it's a distorted name of Begum Sarai. Man, the Begum of Bhagalpur said she you, ma'am, she used to visit uh, the Simaria Ghat and she used to like rest here and that like Sarai is called a rest house and that's where my Begum Sarai to it become now Begu Sarai. Okay, and uh, region wise, we know that Begu Sarai is a part of Mithila region, right? So now, can you elaborate what exactly comes under Mithila region? What other areas? Ma'am, basically, Mithila region is the region which is like east of River Gandak and north of River Ganga. So, ma'am, like uh, Begu Sarai, ma'am, Darbhanga, Samastipur, even Muzaffarpur, ma'am, these regions, and and apart from these, uh, some more districts, uh, they come under ma'am, uh, like Khadiya, they come under ma'am, uh, the Mithila okay, region. Okay, one. Ah, uh, one thing uh, that is very interesting as far as arts is concerned, that Mithila painting is very famous, right? And we have another Madhubani painting, very famous. So, can you differentiate between the two? I am aware of Madhubani painting, not exactly aware of Mithila painting. Okay. Uh, for now, for for our benefit, what is the difference? I mean, I I must interject here to understand because I don't know the difference myself. Yes, sir. So, actually, Madhubani, uh, the thing is completely. Restricted to one particular place, whereas Mithila painting is, as he also said, that it's more segregated. It involves many other aspects also. So we can say it's much bigger, bigger, a larger set than the Madhubani art. So that's the basic uh, geographical difference we can talk about for these things. Uh, can I go to sir? Yeah, yeah. Sir, go, can I go, go to ahead, few please. questions on current? Rahul. Yeah, please go. Okay, ahead. Rahul, have you uh, heard? A, con uh, a discussion, not exactly controversy, I could say, regarding the minority status given to Hindus and how Supreme Court has expressed the displeasure of the center for not giving back, you no, know, the response as far as this is concerned. So uh, my question is that first of all, tell me what are the constitutional provisions as far as minorities are concerned in India? Do we have? Ma'am, we have like uh, uh, under part part three, ma'am. We have uh, articles twenty nine and thirty, and that say like uh, minorities have the uh, like freedom to preserve their language and culture. And in thirty, ma'am, they can administer like uh, educational institutions of their own. Apart from this, ma'am, we have like articles uh, in part uh, uh, ma'am seventeen, like uh, about the language of minorities. Ma'am, we have a special language, uh, a special officer for ma'am uh, which protects the uh, language of minorities. Hmm. And who is authorized actually to give minority status, either to linguistic minorities or religious minorities? So who is authorized? Um, if I am not wrong, it is a parliament which notifies, uh, like uh, which which can notify. No. For that also, I believe you should look into this thing that who basically is authorized to give, you know, uh, the status of minority to either of these two categories. Uh, can I switch on further or go, go ahead? Go ahead. Take okay. a couple of okay. minutes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, have you heard something regarding a national commission for STs and what was the entire discussion regarding it? So, what was that first of all? 
Um, National Commission of STs, ma'am, uh, that is a uh, constitutional body, ma'am, that was created uh, under Article 338A, and ma'am, uh, basically it has a duty to like ma'am safeguard the rights of STs and promote their welfare. So, what was the controversy which came up recently? It's like just in March last last month. Ma'am, that I'm not aware. Okay. okay, can you just tell me a few concerns? Or issues regarding National Commission for ST. But, uh, yes, ma'am. First, ma'am, it has uh, like ma'am limited powers. Like ma'am, it cannot like uh, award any like ma'am uh, uh, like uh, punishments or like any proceedings against ma'am if there is some ill doings or like ma'am wrong acts. So it can just recommend to like ma'am the uh, judiciary that it, uh, the case should be taken up. Uh, and it's advisory, ma'am. Like whatever, like it report. It Rahul, the, Rahul, like, Rahul, 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 Rahul. Rahul, I can not hear your answer. I can only hear ma'am, 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 ma'am. So cut down on ma'am and sir. It, it's a little jarring. Okay? Yes, sir. Just once or twice is okay, but otherwise it does, it, it does not gel well. Okay? So try not to. Go ahead, please. Uh, Sorry to interrupt you, but I have... Yeah. The commission, ma'am, uh, it has like uh, limited powers, ma'am. Uh, uh, like uh, it cannot uh, award any like, uh, uh, like uh, sentences, like ma'am, if uh, there is uh, some uh, wrongdoings, if uh, com someone has committed some crime against uh, uh, any uh, ST person, then it cannot award any victims. It can just, ma'am, recommend. Also, when it gives a report to the parliament, that is advisory, and no, there's no any like uh, binding uh, on if a parliament to take action. Okay. Done. Yes. Sir. All right. Rahul, what is what what is Samastipur famous or infamous for? So it is famous for uh, the Central Agricultural uh, uh, Research Agricultural Research uh, University, which was uh, early earlier uh, the as known as sir, IARI, that the Pusa Institute. There was something happened in Samastipur long ago. Any idea? Which which uh, brought it uh, at the national level, but you don't remember? Sir, don't know exactly about what, in which context you are asking, sir. Something which made Samastipur infamous. So there were anyway. many like uh, killings and also like. Uh, no, there was something major political, but read about it. Okay. Let's talk of uh, India's economy. What or let, Let's talk of India's internal challenges. What would be the three biggest inter, internal challenges of India? Three biggest internal challenges. So regarding economy? No, I said what will be the three biggest internal challenges of India? Give yourself two seconds, think about it, and then reply. Sir, the very first challenge uh, would be, sir, to uh, ensure that the high population, the demographic dividend we have, so that should be like uh, utilized. Sir. This is one of the first, very first challenge, sir. Uh, okay. so that let, let, let us have a conversation. Hmm? We'll, uh, we'll, we'll go back and forth as if we are sitting across each other and having a friendly conversation. What does it do you mean by demographic dividend? Sir, it basically means the uh, high num uh, number of, sir, uh, chunk of youth population which any country or which any like population has. All right. So then, what does what happens with that? So the youth population, sir, that is basically the constituent of workforce, and this means, sir, a larger workforce which can contribute to the larger economic growth or the development of. All the right. Workforce. So, are we harnessing the de demographic dividend? What What is your assessment about? We have been talking about demographic dividend, but uh, have we been able to harness it? So we have not been able to harness it fully, but we are trying to like uh, uh, take more measures so that we can harness it uh, fully so in the coming times. Like what? What should we do realistically? Not an airy-fairy answer, but realistically, if 
you have to take a decision to harness the demographic dividend in India, knowing the realities of India, constraints of India. What will you do? Or you have to advise the Prime Minister. What will you advise him? So, two very key sectors are the health and education. We need to like turn, leave no stones unturned. So we need to like increase the quality education or like the training of teachers and so the school infrastructure. And sir, for regarding healthcare, we need to like uh, ramp up the sir, primary healthcare centers, which are currently in a dismal state. Although there are many schemes, sir, but like, they are not uh, being uh, are being implemented. All right. So to... I, I I take your point that one is uh, of the three things. One is to harness the demographic dividend. Then I was asking you about the three uh, main uh, challenges of the Indian economy. Of, of sorry, three main internal challenges of India. So second uh, would be sir uh, to ensure sir the uh, women's safety and women's participation increases in the more in a uh, sir, social sphere and political sphere. Ra Rahul, I I would urge you to just give it a thought and prioritize. This is a very important point. But do you think that this is among the three top three? Then it's okay. All right, let's let's part with women's participation. What is the level of women's participation in workforce at the moment in India? So it's around so 6, 17 to 18 percent. And is it rising or falling? So it is falling. Isn't it an uh, anomaly that uh, women are getting more educated, the quality of life is improving, and yet the women's participation is dropping? Why is that? So many reasons are there. First is that like, uh, as women are being educated, we are not uh, like having jobs with, uh, which are matching with their skills and education. Like they are uh, well overly qualified for like we have jobs which are which do not require skill uh, in that sector. So, one of the men are also overly qualified. Men, men are also overly qualified, right? What applies to women applies to men. For a clerk's job, you have people who have done their masters are applying. So why is men's participation not falling? Sir, uh, there are many sectors where, sir, like women are hesitant to resistant hesitant to work. Sir, for example, like men can work in sir more at agricultural labor field or sir like uh, construction workers. So there, the participation of women no, is Rahul, less. Ra Rahul, I I am sorry to interject. You know that hazardous jobs, difficult jobs, men do. That has been the case always, right? It is not that the hazards or difficulties have increased. My question to you is, given the increasing level of education and uh, availability, income, health, etc. More women should have been participating. Why less is my question. So we uh, so, uh, currently, sir, like uh, women have been being educated, sir. They are looking for jobs, and like, uh, sir, uh, also like women have now now going for sir greater uh, like uh, education, sir, higher. So that can also sir, one one of the reasons, sir, like uh, in current times, so that has like fallen. So it might increase in the coming times when women would more participate in services sector, like after being getting the skills and all that. So this might increase. All right. So this is the second, third, third main challenge for India. Sir, uh, sir it would be sir, like to uh, uh, weed out the corruption sir, that has been prevalent in the, the system and so that. Uh, Okay, the what what do you what what do you understand by hard power? What's the difference between hard power and soft power? Sir, so hard power basically refers to the military power or the physical uh, power or uh, which uh, a country uh, like uh, that's used, sir, uh, which a country uses against other to get, gain influence or gain in its interest. While soft power, sir, it's basically use of sir diplomatic things and sir like using of our culture, language, or sir. Uh, how do you how do you acquire hard power? What is the foundation of hard power? Sir, for hard power, sir, first of all, sir, we need uh, like a growing uh, like uh, monetary backup so that sir we can purchase sir, more weapons or more invest in sir like defense so, equipment. So, sir. in other words, what do you need? Economy, Eco yes, sir, econ economic a... growth. So, let me pose this question to you again. What is the biggest three biggest challenges of India? 
is economic growth the biggest challenge or it's not the biggest challenge because without economic growth nothing of that what you have said will happen you cannot have hard power you cannot have safe borders you cannot have uh you cannot harness de- demographic dividend you cannot create employment so would you agree that economic growth is uh, the biggest concern or it's not yes sir it is one of the sir, it is the biggest concern because of that would be the bedrock of uh, any other activity sir isn't it so uh, one should bear that in mind that everything everything hinges on economic growth your standing in the world your socio economic indices your security your defense the attraction of your soft power uh, it is all about economy 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 all right okay uh you are you are not very interested in international affairs i see you you are you have opted for ifs as the fifth choice or seventh choice sir it's fifth choice so why are you discriminating against the ifs sir it is not my discrimination all the services are equally good and sir like by give, give, being given an opportunity i would like to uh, serve so then there. why sir, why why, my... did you, why did you not uh, give ias as the fifth choice and ifs as the first choice if it is all services are equal sir this what according to sir my assessment of my personality and my skills sir that i uh, like uh, thought which where which areas excellent. i would like to serve and i could better sir excellent ex what is the role of foreign policy what what is the meaning of foreign policy what does foreign policy do so foreign policy basically means sir uh, uh, encompasses uh, like uh, whatever objectives what we need to like uh, uh, achieve by via sir our uh, like foreign uh, relations and all and sir like foreign policy sir does what it sir secures interest for india uh, put forward whatever india's objective Excellent. are so ba- basically it's an extension of domestic policy right it is f- furthers the domestic policy excellent last question as far as i am concerned can india and pakistan be friends or can we have a cordial relationship sir at currently i won't say but yes sir in future we can have sir if pakistan agrees to like uh, the, all the international treaties and sir like restricts it from cross border uh, uh, terrorism and all so only at that situation we can be friends no my and question I'm, again is that hopeful so your hope is based on what what do you believe will pakistan do i mean realistically say 10 in 10 years from now 20 years from now what do you think will happen or what would pakistan do or not do that we can have a working relationship with them so basically it's the people of pakistan like if they become aware that like like, uh, like having a friendly relations india is in their interest like interest of all the region so they, then they can sir, put a pressure on their sir, elected governments and all sir these things can happen and second how will they how will they apply pressure because uh, the the real power is with the army right and 75 years they have not been they even if they are aware they have not been able, able to apply pressure so how can they apply pressure so if the people become aware sir then uh, the power would automatically shift in the hands of people sir there's no army or sir, nothing uh, can stop them if sir like in, let's say in 50 years sir, they become aware and they try to assert that uh, whatever they want sir their elected government will be there and like uh, their policies will be put forward sir that can happen my colleague my colleague had uh, told you a phrase toxic positivity right that's what you ta- taught us yes, balwinder okay all right i would not say toxic positivity rather it's an optimism sir where like in like in saying 50 years sir that things can improve sir although we need to be prepared sir in for all eventualities sir but no rahul uh, i agree with you positivity is optimism is fine but it has to be based on realism all right so one has to be the foundation has to be realistic all right so we your formal part of your interaction is over how do you think you have performed today so not up to the mark i was missing on many factual question and even on like the your questions sir 
no but where 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 do you think you did well where do, if you analyze your responses what where did you do well where do you, do you think there is a scope for improvement sir in uh, sir scope for improvement is sir, there in like a uh, few uh, like uh, uh, current events have us a lot aware like scst controversy and like uh, sir the jharkhand player so these things are not aware and sir in uh, what areas i did well sir so that was in sir like uh, sir some of the question like your foreign policy there i was direct and i could was able to give direct answer all right uh let me turn to my colleagues to give you feedback uh and uh, then we'll take it forward balwinder boss unmute kar lo apne aap ko no i think you are absolutely fine you cannot be perfect in all the in giving all the answers especially on uh, foreign affairs because there is a whole range of subjects where board can ask question they can enter into any domain and then uh, start asking question the only thing is whatever knowledge you have you give in a very balanced way and don't guess like i was in the beginning i was asking about brawny uh, fertilizer plant so you were basically you were guessing you were actually that plant was closed only because of a uh, few uh, the, uh, the fertilizer plant was using and the policy was switched over to gas at that time so but i think you are absolutely fine you give a uh, i think uh, you need to put some more clarity while uh, answering the question be neutral be political neutral as well as give a realistic assessment you need not be very positive on different uh, fronts uh, like i was asking about uh, is the world becoming a better place then the answer should be yes and no at the same time we are becoming better in many respect but at the same time we are worsening on many fronts like uh, climate change uh, and um, other conflicts so there is a whole range mata you can debate on this issue so you should not be straight away in uh, uh, giving answer to such uh debatable uh, issues or controversial because the board may put such kind of questions which are uh, which can be argued on both the ways mm. okay so give a very balanced and uh, be very 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 careful when uh, some member is asking about such questions okay so in the beginning itself you make a uh, assessment you say yes and no and i feel in this way but there are different aspects okay otherwise good koi problem nahi hai be confident that's all vivek yes sir uh, apart from what uh, the senior officers have said rahul i would say that you are a good candidate but you should back yourself you see you have already faced this mock interview maybe a couple of others the actual interview may not be so tough even if it is you should support yourself i think you are a little bit uh, my that's my impression that you are not very happy with yourself overall just be your best supporter in a psychological way i'm telling you boost yourself before going be calm sleep well and even if you don't know something just be calmly confident and frank that sir i don't know this i i would like to talk about this or not uh, so i think if you uh, improve your uh, mental uh, you know the uh, equation that is you are backing yourself being a little more confident you will do better secondly a minor point is not board of cricket control is board of control for cricket in india you have to be exact when you know something especially when cricket is your subject this board of control for cricket in india everything about cricket you should know if you have written cricket over there yes thank you shruti ji may i sir yes please 
Yeah. Uh, so Rahul, what I found is that uh, first of all, uh, don't be so nervous. Reason because, see, you have qualified two stage, and it's not a big deal. It's a big deal of qualifying two stage and coming on the third stage, right? So first of all, be very confident. Okay. So no, don't be so nervous. Even if you are inside nervous, you should not show it. And that's I believe is an excellent trait of a civil servant, right? Like there is a thinker in political science. He talks. His name is Machiavelli. You must have heard. He's a very realist thinker. Yes. So what Machiavelli says is that you have to act like a fox and a lion and a civil servant. The present what he talks about prince is a present civil servant. You have to act like a lion, right? You have to be voracious. You have to be fox means you have to be extra alert, vigilant. Okay. Now I know so, what Vivek Atre is all about. Thank you. <laughs> Sir, Machiavellian has negative uh, traits also. No, no, no. I'm uh, the honourable board member has just described a civil servant here. I'm not talking about the bad man, bro. So actually, the Machiavellian prince can be con can be related to present day civil servants, right? You have to have. and so this this facet you have to develop within yourself and even you have to reflect it in the board that i am a civil servant material so take me in right so first thing is this be be very calm uh, and don't be very nervous so face say you should not be very nervous second thing what i found is that when balvinder sir asked that how could world be a better place to live in right see for my take for these kind of questions which are very uh, generalist though very specific in nature you have to be very multi dimensional so in one question if you are given an opportunity try to show your knowledge try to show your insight okay just in 2 3 minutes you have to show everything that you know so much about this thing hmm so you have to be very concise so how you can be multi dimensional always try to figure out or uh, or touch issues of gender so gender issues has to be taken up environment issues have to be taken up subaltern issues you can always take up subaltern means peasant workers women uh, children vulnerable sections right and uh, aspect of human security can be taken up these are certain few things which have to have there in your answer these you have must have put in your mains also in your interview also just in 2 3 minutes you have to show all these things that you know a lot about this issue of being happy okay so try to be multi dimensional in that respect another thing when i asked you about youth parliament right so uh, see this is this was your area and uh, interview when we are asking you a question then the ball is now in your court it's your time and utilize that time to the highest extent right so you need to be a very detailing you need to give detail like these 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 are few assets which i have taken up in the youth parliament okay so that you didn't mention in a very elaborate way and next like uh, also you know you have to be very as you said that you were not well with the current affairs so just keep a tab of last 2 3 months current affair that will do okay and also your district hmm? so the art form and everything of your district you have to know else everything was very fine okay but but just be bit more confident when you are appearing in front of an interview that's all all the very best thank you you know samastipur read about it 40 years ago or more than that uh, there was a blast at the railways station in lalit samastipur sir lalit yes. narayan mishra sir i was aware sir, but yes, i was not sir. like exactly remembering what incident are you referring to sir that was no i, I mean to... that that made headlines i was you were not born i was born and uh, you know for years samastipur was associated with that so uh, just uh, the domain knowledge um i don't th when is your interview 25th may okay and uh, th uh, this is you you have appeared for civil services earlier no sir this is my first attempt oh not bad congratulations to first attempt to sail through and come here so i uh, what uh, dr joshi is saying if i were to just give you one tip smile a little more and relax when you smile you'll 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 feel more confident and just remember one thing that the board members are there to select you they they are they are on your side so they'll only role play they will act tough may some of the may some may, but they are and they love candidates who have appeared for the first time and made it so you have a uh, you, you are doing very well do you have any question 
So, sir, sir, like uh, on the aspect, sir, uh, the Balvinder sir mentioned about the toxic positivity, sir. Is it too much, or sir, sir? Do I need to say, especially on the like, Pakistan question, sir? Like, uh, what should I? Uh, like, no, I, I, I'll have Mr. Balvinder answer it. But on the Pakistan question, you have to be. You know, yeah, in fact, that reminds me. Just prioritize your answers, you know, because uh, instead of just giving an answer, so you know, seek. give attach the requisite importance and then you'll get the answer in pakistan if you know the structure when the army is controlling it controlling pakistan and the only reason why army is supreme is that there is an enemy called india and they have told pakistan is that these indians are devious a bloodthirsty uh, indians who are going to uh, invade pakistan we are your guardians so if pakistan were to have an understanding with india and uh, they would have peace with india that is very bad news for the army yes sir the the worst the thing that pakistani army fears the most is peace because then people will tell him that go home so there are some structural issue in pakistan the terrorist infrastructure the isi which have become law unto themselves so all that i'm saying is that if you know the factual position you then can structure your answer better uh, i have nothing to add over to balwinder unmute kar lo yaar rahul when was when i was asking about uh, toxic positivity it i didn't mean that uh, you are becoming ex- excessively positive no i was just asking whether you have heard this terminology that's all you are absolutely fine in giving that uh, answer but I, as i explained earlier you should be little bit more realistic rather than giving a absolutely uh, positive way when i when i was asking about uh, whether the world is becoming a better place otherwise i am absolutely fine you are not uh, excessively positive you were not okay Yes, you are absolutely fine. You are in the first attempt. You have you are doing a good job. That's anything all. else, my anything else, my dear? That's all. No sir, that's all. All the very best to you. Take care. Thank you, sir.